In this video we will understand Class 8 History Chapter 2 From Trade to Territory The Company Establishes Power Let's start 1. Transition from Mughal Rule Aurangzeb The last powerful Mughal ruler controlled a large part of India After Aurangzeb's death in 1707 regional powers emerged and Delhi's authority weakened 2. East India Company's Early Activities In 1600, the East India Company received a charter from Queen Elizabeth I, granting it a monopoly on trade with the East. The company aimed to buy goods in India at low prices and sell them in Europe at higher prices. European powers, including the Portuguese, Dutch, and French, were also interested in Indian trade leading to competition and conflicts. 3. Trade and Conflict European trading companies competed for Indian goods like cotton, silk, spices, and more. Competition drove up prices, reducing profits for these companies. Fierce battles and fortifications became common as companies sought to secure markets and protect their trading posts. 4. East India Company in Bengal the East India Company established its first factory in 1651 on the banks of the Hooghly River in Bengal. Over time, it expanded its presence, built forts, and obtained privileges from Mughal rulers. Conflicts arose as the company refused to pay duties, leading to tensions with local rulers. 5. The Battle of Plassey, in 1757, Sirajud Dollar. The Nawab of Bengal clashed with the company over taxes and control. The Battle of Plassey took place, with Robert Clive leading the company's army. Mir Jaffa, one of Sirajud Dollar's commanders, switched sides, leading to the Nawab's defeat. 6. Company's Territorial Ambitions The company initially focused on trade but struggled to work with puppet Nawabs. The Diwani system allowed the company access to Bengal's revenue, reducing the need for gold and silver imports from Britain. The company's territorial ambitions grew as it sought more territories and revenue. 7. Annexation and Doctrine of Lapse The company expanded its control through various methods, including annexation. The doctrine of lapse declared that if a ruler died without a male heir, the kingdom would become company territory. The company gradually annexed several regions, including Avadh and Punjab. 8. Paramountcy and Resistance The company claimed paramountcy, asserting its power over Indian states. Resistance movements, like that of Rani Channamma and Rayanna, emerged against company rule. The fear of Russian expansion in Central Asia led to conflicts in the Northwest, further expanding company control. 9. Administrative Changes The company introduced administrative reforms, including district courts and uniform laws. Collectors became key figures in the districts, focusing on revenue collection and law enforcement. 10. Company Army and Sepoys the company's military evolved from cavalry focused to infantry dominated as warfare technology changed. Soldiers faced European style training and discipline, impacting their identity and communal ties. 11. Transformation into a colonial power. The East India Company transformed from a trading company to a territorial colonial power. Steam technology reduced travel time to India encouraging more British settlers. By 1857, the company controlled a significant portion of India directly and indirectly, marking its dominance. These chapter provided a step-by-step -step overview of the East India Company's journey from a trading entity to a colonial power in India, highlighting key events and developments.